So in the previous uh, five minutes, I was trying to talk, but I just realized I've been using the wrong mic and the sound was uh, terrible. So I'm going to explain again. So basically what I did is I quickly pause, roughly pause the character to have an idea of how I wanted it to be. And I changed the proportion and the, and the pause of the of the frog to, to have like a rough idea of where the, element, the elements are going to be. So um, now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get back to Das 3D because it's it's much more easy to sketch a pose in Das 3D, which is really super convenient because we, you can distort the characters in, in any situation. And maybe I'll, I'll re-import this mesh afterward and, and uh, re-sculpt or reuse parts of this character because um, it's more important for me to get the pose right and then to sculpt on top of it even without symmetry. Because I'm, I'm basically painting with 3D, I'm only concerned in the uh, 2D representation of the scene. I'm, I'm not really worried about what happened uh, with uh, symmetry and so on. So I just want to get the shapes and composition right and balance the right amount of details I'm going to do in ZBrush or in um, Photoshop depending on the, on the uh, efficiency of the process. So the other thing is that doing this very, very early in the process helped me to uh, not get caught into the 3D messing around and only focus on the painting because even though I was sure to have a very clear image of what I wanted in my mind, most of the time, what exists in my mind and what can actually exist in the physical world, or at least on a 2D canva that, that follows the rules of the, of the physical world, are quite different. So I often hear people telling me, okay, I'm super frustrated because I'm sure to have a perfect image of what I want in my mind. But when I try to actually create that um, on my painting, I can't, and it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, I want to tell you, it's the same for me. I, I don't think it is actually possible to have a perfect representation of uh, the rules of the physical world in our mind. I, I believe, I'm, I'm not sure from a scientific point of view, so this is only my belief, but I have the intuition that what exists in your mind doesn't really follow the same rules. It doesn't really belong to the same uh, dimension, to the same physical world. So it's, I think it's perfectly possible to, to have a clear image in our, in our head of some things that absolutely can't happen on a 3D Canva. So for me, there is always this back and forth between my initial idea and what I'm building in, uh, in, uh, in 2D, 3D, 2D, that helps me to really create the image. So this is why I don't, I don't try to solve everything from the beginning. I'm just trying to have an idea and even the storytelling, the composition, the colors, the actual elements start to come together during the process. So there is like a lot of unexpected things that can happen. This is also why I wanted to record this way as, as real time as possible to, to share my state of mind. So I was telling you that I was thinking to have like three creatures in the background, maybe a frog, a spider, and maybe another one. Right now, I'm not sure because I can see that with that current ratio, uh, I, I really want to have that frog extremely, extremely big to have like these really big shapes that is going to compensate with the details that are going to be created by the silhouettes of this main character, of the, of the prey he's using to attract the fish that is going to go, go outside of the water. So this is a lot of very detailed information. So I need to have in the background very strong, simple, big shapes to compensate so the image still stay as readable as possible. And also to really focus on the statement I want to tell. So the question is, are these two other background creatures really important for the story I want to tell? I'm not sure yet. So right now I'm starting to question my initial idea 
because maybe it's not going to be possible. So, yeah, so I think it's important to always keep an open mind towards the initial idea and, and really understand that this is the creative process itself, the back and forth between the initial imagination, what actually happened on the canvas, that at least for me helped me to create images. So let's jump, let's jump in DAS 3D. So this was my initial uh, DAS 3D um, just pose where I was trying to, to figure out the, uh, the basic pose from the character. So I really, I really like DAS 3D because it offers like the ability to customize the rough shape Actually, I don't care about all the surface details of the characters because I'm going to remove them. I don't care about the muscles and so on because I'm going to change a lot of that. But it, it offers me a basic um, human shape that can help me to, uh, to sketch a pose, which is really what I'm looking for. So let me grab the proper tool, which is active pose. And now, yeah, I'm going to try just to roughly pose character so I want it to be totally unbalanced so it is he's going to have uh, I, I need to look for the word because I'm not sure about it sorry about that but There is sometimes maybe fishing rod. Ah, okay, it's a rod, rod, okay. So this character is going to, here he's going to have a rod. And at the bottom of the rod is going to be um, the child or the dog. As I said, I'm not sure yet if it's going to be a child or a dog. So, Just want to roughly, yeah. So I, I don't know, and I want him. I was trying to explain that when I realized the, the mic was hooked up, but I want him to use his umbrella to try to reach behind him and to try to, to keep to keep a balance on the unstable boat, because basically he's going to pull out the, the child with his rod super strong and super fast because he don't want the fish to actually be able to, uh, to, to eat the prey. So, which is uh, not prey, I'm going also to find for the proper word. Um, bet, I think it's bet. Mills, no, apa. Uh, okay, it's not proper language. French to English. Apa or pate? Maybe it's like that. Bait. Yeah, it's like bait. Okay. So he wants to keep his bait. Maybe it's not because he loves the bait or he has any feeling about the bait. It's because it's like. A totally pragmatic thinking you know I need my bait to catch another fish so I don't want that one fish to eat the bait so he's going to pull out the bait very strong the fish is going to come out of the water to try to pick the bait and here the frog is going to use his its tongue to grab to uh, yeah to catch the, the fish So let's see what I can do with, yes, with this umbrella. So. It's, it is super strange. There, there is definitely um, a habit to develop with that 3D where you, you can basically learn to ignore the uh, <laughs> the appearance of the character because 
if you focus on on the character itself, it's going to destroy any ability to <laughs> to be creative because it looks like totally terrible. So yeah, I try to really not focus on the actual shape of the character, but really try to uh, to keep in mind the the storytelling and the, the pose I want to I want to develop. But it takes it definitely takes some habit because it's it's more like super super strange. Really strange. Especially when you, you start to customize the, uh, the shaping a bit strongly to have an interesting uh, an interesting uh, base shape. Yeah, so I guess for the strands he will he really need he he will really need to compress his um, his arm toward his, his chest. I really want to to make feel like he's he's using a lot of, of strength. Yeah, maybe it's too much, but it's a basic idea because um, he will need to have the bottom of the rod that is going to pass um, just on the side of his hip to block it. Yeah, see something like that. So now I, I'm really, I really need to adjust. Just no, it's maybe not the correct bone. Let's try this one. No, front back. No twist. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit limited. Sometimes the uh, the movement you can do with uh, with that 3D. So. Yeah, let's say let's say it's something in that in that kind of uh, of feeling. So I have to adjust the uh, the pose of the end. Left carpal. So. So I will try to get the uh, the angle right. I also need to uh, twist. No, it's not the correct couple. The other one. Yeah. So I'm going, I'm going to remo remove the limits. Okay. I, I'm I'm not going to present the the overall. Uh, I mean. That's really is a uh, is pretty straightforward. Yeah, there is a lot a lot of documentation online, and uh, it's very it's very easy to use. And I think nowadays it's it's really a shame not to using because it's a uh, it's really really interesting creative tool. I mean, there is like some poses that are very very hard to to guess in 3D space, and uh, it's it's very really great to feel more like an animator I, i'm i am not an animator at all that's not what i mean but this is a bit i feel it's a bit like the work of an animator where you already have like an existing shape a 3d animator and what you try is really to to make this the um the character feel right in a given situation And as I said, there is a lot of challenges. You really need to ignore ignore the uh, the absurdity of the shape of the character shape because sometimes it's it's very disturbing. And I think I'm I'm starting to get to get what I want to get there. Yeah. So as I said, he's going to have his umbrella in this hand, 
and I really want I really really want him to feel like he's he's putting super hard on the umbrella to uh, to keep the balance. So I'm probably going to do a couple back and forth between uh, between the brush, key shot, and that's really to really try to get the, the shape right. And once I have the proper pose, I, I will I will totally destroy this shape and, and start to sculpt on it the, uh, the, the character. So now I want to have a, a little more twist. And yeah, sometimes you really get to remove these limits because I'm not looking for anatomical accuracy because I'm going to re-sculpt everything. So it's not a big issue if the distortion are, are really crazy, which starts to happen right now. I mean, the, the neck is, is <laughs> doesn't make absolutely any sense at all. Yeah, I uh, I think I, it start it start to feel a bit like I wanted, but it's not yet there. Maybe I need to put this on the side. I don't know. Uh, maybe I need to do something about the hips. Let's see. Yeah. I think I think it, it will feel better like that. So I re I'm really looking for this triangular shape. When he's going, he he will have his coat on him. I really want this triangular shape. I really like this, this triangular shape, which is going to contrast with the uh, the ellipse of the uh, of the umbrella, which is going to be there. And. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be the rod. It's going to be in this direction, the rod here. And just at the bottom, it's going to pull very hard on the, on the rod to get the child out of the mouth of the, of the fish. I to exaggerate a bit. Let's save this. Okay, so I'm going to send this to the brush. Send it to the brush. Okay, so the scene is here. And it's, it's already in the proper place because uh, I kept my um, my character mesh in the in the center. So you see, it's it's kind of cool because I I, I will I won't have a lot of work to uh, just roughly place the elements I want. So I'm going to duplicate the umbrella. I, I don't care to, to have like things that doesn't match. It's really about having the rough. I'm even going to remove the codes and, and anything else right now. I just want to see how the umbrella and the overall shape of the character can work with the, uh, the frog in the background. So let's see. Okay. Ok. 
trying to grasp to I am not using the, the proper word. I'm going to take a stronger sun and sky. Just to have a rough idea. Remove the matcap texture because it's uh, it's messing with the uh, actual lighting. When you send when you send um, a matcap from ZBrush to Keyshot, it records the actual matcap lighting information on a, on a lighting map. So you really want to remove this lighting map because it's going to convey another lighting information. If, if I'm using a flat, see a flat uh, materials, which should be perfectly gray. You see that there is already lighting information embedded. So you really want to remove this, uh, this map and make sure to use a, a diffuse, yeah, diffuse materials. And I, I always take a 50% gray to make sure I, I have a, a proper uh, lighting scale. So I really want this to feel like a super sunny noun day. So right now this, this angle doesn't really work. So I'm going to put my coordinates at the equator, equator, some, some O. I believe it should be something like equator here, yeah. And I'm going to try to have a very high sun in the sky, 12 O, -O. 12 O, -O. and uh, the date, going to be in uh, June but yeah it's it's high enough in the sky I think it's really a really a high noon see there is almost no difference if I'm moving my sun around so it's a good start and maybe after that I I had I'll add a slight angle I, I don't know so I'm going to save this one too. Okay. I'm saving like a lot because Keyshot tends to, to crash once in a while, especially when sending a lot of updates from, from ZBrush. So I'm just switching to full simulation to really have like some very nice materials. And to see all the light, all the lighting will work. So maybe I can I can adapt the uh, the angle of the sun afterward. Before messing around too much with the pose, I really want to try to get the overall feeling of the composition. Camera seven. Yeah, I'm going to pull the umbrella, I think, even more towards the, towards the back. So it, it really feels like he's He's pulling hard on the umbrella to keep his uh, balance. Maybe something like this. I still want the hand to be in silhouette against the background. So now we might have like too much of a tangent. I mean, this, these two elements close one to another, it, it creates details, a detail. So I don't want detail in here. So. I'm going to just go back a bit. Yeah, maybe like that is better. Okay, maybe I need to turn the characters just a little bit on this side. Just so we can have a 
a better silhouette about uh, his uh, left, uh, yeah, left arm. Okay, it's, it it really has a lot of imagination. I'm, I'm really aware of this. It's it's not easy right now to to really have a a good projection of what of what I'm going for. Sorry about that. But right now I, I'm I'm really is this, this is like a lot of unconscious things that I'm doing, but I know that I'm unconsciously trying to align this uh, strong uh, straight line here. I'm thinking about the curve that is going to, to occur because of this of this line here. So maybe later I'll, I'll have like something emphasizing the curve in here. I still don't know what curves the, the fish is going to have. So I think before even sculpting this character, I really, I really want to have all the elements in place because it wouldn't make sense to start to add details if I don't have like a, a good understanding of all the the silhouettes of each elements are going to structure the composition. Most of the time when you are working straight from 2D, you start to create the structure, which are the, the abstract lines that are going to set the uh, the borders for the for the abstract shapes. I mean, like shadow is an abstract shape, light is an abstract shape, and, and it creates triangles, square, uh, losanges, curve, and so on. But when using this process, it's very important to very, very early uh, think about the structure of the composition, because if you start to get caught by the 3D and the details of the 3D and think about all the stuff about texturing, about having these nice realistic details, and you forgot, forget about really focusing on the core elements of the image, which are the abstract composition and the shapes and all, all, this, this, all these shapes are organized to lead your eyes in a specific way inside the image. Um, it's very, very difficult to fix later. So this is why I, I don't want to spend, I, in fact, I want to spend the least amount of time sculpting uh, the least amount possible time sculpting right now because if I start to in invest too much time in sculpting um, I'm going to get caught into the, the tunnel effect uh, which which is when you, you start to spend so much time on an image that you, you, you lose your ability to see the core fundamentals of the image and to perceive what doesn't work. So right now I'm going to go on the internet, grab a fish 3D model because I don't want to sculpt a fish. And later, when I have everything that works together, I'm going to come back on this base mesh and I'm going to sculpt a fish that works for me for these specific images. But uh, yeah, everything I'm, I, I, I'll grab, I already sculpted some boats in a previous image, so maybe I'm going to grab a boat that I already sculpted. I mean, I, I really want to think like as much as possible like a, a film director, I just want to bring all, all of my elements in the image, try to see how they work with a specific lighting, with a specific composition. And once I have everything in place and I have the proof that my initial storytelling idea can work in a given setting, then after that, I'm really going to concentrate on making all the details and, and uh, stylizing the shapes and really thinking about uh, the silhouettes I want to have and the kind of details I want to sculpt. Uh, 